Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going to go over RetroArch for beginners using RetroArch on Android. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, RetroArch is an all-in-one emulation solution for Android. It's pretty much a one-stop shop, and the best part about it, it's absolutely free. To get started, head over into the Google Play Store on your Android device, search for RetroArch, and install it. There's also a RetroArch 64 version, but you don't really need it. It's pretty much the exact same as the standard RetroArch. When you first boot up RetroArch, it will ask you for access to your storage. I highly recommend granting it access, if not, you'll have a pretty tough time loading and playing games. This is what your main screen of RetroArch should look like, unless RetroArch has been updated since this video, in which case I'll have to put out another one. Uh, right now, there are two main ways to play games. I'm going to recommend the first way, and I'll show you that one first. The quick and easy way to get started is to first go to load core, if you're wondering what cores are. At a very high level, each core represents an emulator for a system and you download and install the emulators that you want. In the load core menu, select download a core. Now, once you're in this course list, admittedly, it can be very intimidating. There are a lot of different cores available for a lot of different systems. Some systems have multiple cores. Some core names don't necessarily make the most sense and it can get very confusing very fast. The biggest thing to remember here is that you can't really break RetroArch by downloading a core. So feel free to download the cores for the systems that you have ROMs for that you want to play in RetroArch. You can try different cores for different systems and see which cores work best for you. Cores will perform differently on different devices. There's not necessarily one universal core that works perfect on every single device out there. However, some systems only have one core available, which makes choosing it a lot easier. Feel free just to experiment and see what works for you. If you want to know more about cores, all you have to do is just click and highlight one of the systems. The full core information will come up. I will leave a link to a wiki page in the description below, and you can search for the core and read up on it if you're actually interested. For the purposes of this video, I will be downloading Genesis Plus GX and trying out a Sega Genesis game. To download the core, all you have to do is just click on the core you want. Once you click on the core, it only takes a second to install. Once you have the cores downloaded that you want to use, the next step is to select Load Content. From here, you will select the game that you want to play. You will need to know where your ROMs are located in order to select them. This might take a while, but be patient, and if you know where they are, you'll get there pretty quickly. If not, you'll learn where they are. Once you've found wherever your games are, feel free to just click on the game to load it up. If you only have one core installed, it should automatically boot up the game. If you have multiple cores for a single system installed, it will give you the option to select the core you want to use. And that is pretty much it. From here, you are good to go to start playing. Now for the second way to add games. If you want RetroArch to organize all of your games into playlists, the easy way to do that is to select the middle button at the very bottom of the RetroArch app. From here, you can access games you've marked as favorites, you can scan an individual file, or you can scan an entire directory. Once you have finished scanning everything, it will show up in the very bottom here under a designated playlist. Once you finish scanning everything, you can select a playlist and it will populate with games that you have, including box art. From here, you can select the game you're looking for, choose the core, and then you're off to the races. When you're in game, if you want to change from portrait to landscape mode, just twist your phone and RetroArch will automatically adjust. If you're using touch controls on your phone and you want to switch from a D-pad to a joystick, there's a button right here that will change the controls automatically for you. By default, the fast forward button is located right here, and the center button, if you click it, will bring up the main menu. Now pressing on that little RetroArch logo, the center button, it will bring you to this quick menu. From here, there is a ton of stuff you can do. You can take screenshots, you can save states, you can load states, you can change specific emulator options, you can change your controller layout, you can change your controls, you can do a ton of things from this menu. If you're familiar with emulators and you know how they work, you can select the options button here and tweak your emulator settings. These options will be unique depending on the current core you are using. It's not a universal thing. Each core 
generally has its own specific options. If you don't know what you're doing here, I just recommend leaving everything as is. Now, if you want to change how your gamepad looks on the screen, your touchscreen controls, head over into the on-screen overlay menu. From here, you'll want to scroll down to where you see it say overlay presets. This is the option where you can change the layout on screen of your controller and how it looks. From here, select game pads. And from here, scroll down to the system that you're currently using and select the game pad if available. Not all systems have game pads, but most of them do. Once you go back into the game, you'll see your game pad has changed. Also, pro tip, one of my favorite features about RetroArch is the rewind feature. To enable this, it's turned off by default. In the quick menu, you can click on rewind and then turn on rewind support, but there is a notice here. It specifically states this causes a severe performance hit when playing. So if you aren't using a powerful Android device, this may slow down your gameplay quite a bit. Now, if you're playing a non-demanding game like a Genesis game or a Super Nintendo game, this can be quite a bit of fun. On the other hand, if it is causing issue, I would just recommend using the save and load state feature. The rewind feature works exactly how it sounds. It rewinds your gameplay. So if you've screwed up somewhere along the line and maybe died or hurt yourself, you can rewind to the place where you screwed up and carry on and not make the same mistake again. RetroArch is an incredibly powerful program, but it can be incredibly intimidating to use. Hopefully this video was helpful to at least get you started using RetroArch. This is just a beginner video. There is so much more you can do with this program. It's not even funny. There is a ton you can do. It's one of my favorite emulator apps on the Google Play Store, and I highly recommend at least checking it out. It is free and it's very easy to use once you understand it. On top of that, if you do screw up anything at all while setting up RetroArch, just head into your app data for this app in the settings menu on your Android device and delete it. Start from scratch, or just feel free to uninstall and reinstall the app. Anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are about RetroArch. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.